morning students and uh, welcome to today's session so we will start with the discussion of uh, some of the questions and doubts from hc verma work by energy today So do let me know if you have any particular questions from H C Verma you want to discuss. There are a couple of questions that I will be discussing in any case. yeah so please let me know the question numbers okay okay shikhar we'll come to that so i will start with question number 11 part b Okay, so this is an important question, which is related to another question we have done in friction before, which is why I'm bringing your attention to this question. So we just go through the question we'll discuss. so what it's saying is that you have on the rough surface of given coefficient of friction a block of given mass now a person is pulling the block by applying a force at an angle theta such that minimum magnitude of force has to be applied so the magnitude of force applied has to be minimum to move the block so we have to calculate the work done by this force that is a minimum force through a given displacement the second part is saying that for given the weight of the block 2000 newtons the coefficient of friction on the ground being 0.2 now this force f is applied such that minimum magnitude of force is needed to move the block we want to find the work done by this force to a particular displacement
for a horizontal displacement of 20 meters. So we move the block through a displacement of 20 meters. But we are applying the force such that this force is of minimum magnitude in order to move the block. Okay, so the whole question is about how to calculate the angle theta for the force to be minimum and therefore how to calculate the magnitude of this force, magnitude and angle. So this goes back to that friction question that we discussed earlier. When you apply this force F at an angle theta with all these other forces acting on it, how to select the value of theta so that the force applied is minimum. So in the previous chapter, we have done a question based on this, you will remember. So you have F cos theta minus kinetic friction is equal to MA. And you have F sin theta plus normal reaction is equal to MG. Okay. And we want that E is tending to zero for F being minimum. Okay. And from that, so from this we get F is equal to mu mg upon cos theta plus mu sin theta. So from that we get the minimum force is mu mg upon square root of 1 plus mu square. Mm -hmm. And that occurs for theta equal to tan inverse 1 by mu. Or that is the same thing as cos inverse 1 upon square root of 1 plus mu square. So this is the result that we have to use from friction that we had learned earlier in this question. It's minimum value of force. Now, how we got this? So this is what we have to use now. So how we got this, just try to recall. Okay. What you do is you substitute the value of N into this equation. So this equation becomes F cos theta is equal to mu into mg minus F sine theta. So you get this. So now this denominator, we express this as so we express this as square root of one plus mu square into sine of theta plus something. Okay. So the maxima of the denominator. That is for theta plus alpha equal to 90 degrees or theta equal to 90 minus alpha. So you can see that alpha is tan inverse 1 by mu. So theta becomes tan inverse mu, theta here will be, okay. 
But that's the same thing as this. So now you substitute those things back over here. So now this work done will be f dot s, but for this value, for this value of theta and this value of f. So this will be the work done when the force is applied such that minimum magnitude of force is required. Okay, so just go through this and make sure you're clear with the steps. Let me know if there are any doubts. Okay, next we will discuss question number 19. Okay, so go through this question 11, make sure you understand all the steps and after that come to question 19. If you haven't solved it before, then read through it properly and try to understand the question we will discuss. Yeah, so Shikhar, this step over here, no? this comes by the trigonometric relation. What you do is this function, you multiply, divide by, by square root of 1 plus mu square. 
Okay, the general formula being if you have y is equal to a sin x plus b cos x, you multiply divide by square root of a square plus b square. So then you finally express it by those steps as square root of a square plus b square into sine of x plus some angle, where that angle becomes cos inverse, or oh sorry, tan inverse b by e. So those steps have been applied here. Okay. Right, so you can just revise the exact steps I have explained in in the chapter of friction earlier in a question like this. Incidentally, that question also was from HC Verma only. Okay, let's come to question 19 now. So question 19 is saying that water is falling from a height of 50 meters. And this falling water is used to generate electricity. Okay. So let's say, oh yeah, water falling. From a certain height. So if you have a mass delta M of water falls in time delta T, okay, then the rate at which water falls that is delta m by delta t so that rate is this quantity it is given to us as 1.8 into 10 raised to the power 5 kilograms per hour Okay, so you can write that as 1.8 into 10 raised to the power 5 divided by 3600 kilograms per second. So this is the rate at which so this is so much. Easy per second, okay. So now delta M mass falling through height H, which is given to us to be 50 meters. It involves a loss in gravitational potential energy of this much. So this is converted into energy, electrical energy. The magnitude of this is converted into energy. So power will be the rate at which energy is created with respect to time. So that is your so this will be the power in watts. Okay, so now just divide that by hundred. It will tell you the number of 100 watt lamps that can be used from this. Okay. So, hope this question is clear. Let's move to question 22 next.
Okay, there is one additional thing in the question, which I forgot to mention. Uh, the power will actually be 50% of this. Okay. This will not be equal to the energy. This is not correct. This step is not correct. Let me explain. The question says that 50% of the potential energy is converted into So this is okay. Delta U gravitational is minus delta MGH. This is fine. Now the question says that 50% of the gravitational potential energy lost is converted to electrical energy. delta e let's say so this tells us that delta e is 0 0.5 times this okay so power this will become half or 0 0.5 times this so there's an additional factor of half okay that's why the answer should be actually half of what we were originally getting from this Hope it is clear, Shikhar. So this line is there in the question. If you read it carefully, you know, somewhere in between the question, it says that 50% of gravitational potential energy is converted. So this delta e is only 50% or 0.5 or half times delta e. So from this, you will get that the power is half of the rate of energy loss. Hope you understood this summer. Okay, let's move on to 22nd question. So it says that 200 meter freestyle women swimming gold medal at the Olympics was won for a record of this much. So a displacement was of 200 meters was covered in a time interval of 1 minute and 57.56 seconds. So that is 60 plus this. So now it says that this was covered at a uniform speed. So let's say that speed was b okay so that uniform speed would have been this much okay. now it also says that the athlete she had to exert a power of 460 watts to maintain the speed so power exerted was equal to 460 watts to maintain constant speed B. Okay. That V is of course 200 divided by this much. Okay. So what is happening is if you think of the free body diagram of the swimmer to maintain the constant velocity You have to exert force. Why? Because it's telling you that there is power exerted. Because there is drag force, like a friction. This is friction or some kind of drag force. So the force exerted by the swimmer is equal to this. So the power is equal to okay. so 
so from this you can find out f so here we are using the formula that power delivered by a force is given by this and here the direction of this force is the same as the direction of velocity so hope this question is also clear now Okay, now next we will move on to question number Okay, let's understand question number 27. It says that there are certain specifications for a scooter given by the manufacturer. Mass of the scooter is 95 kilograms. Maximum speed is 60 kilometers per hour. Maximum engine power is 3.5 horsepower or multiply by a factor of 746 to get the power in watts. Okay. Time to get to maximum speed. Pick up time is five seconds. 
Okay, so from that you are telling that the maximum acceleration is maximum speed by the pickup type. Okay, so this is the maximum acceleration. So check the validity of this. Okay, so to check the validity, you can see that the maximum force developed by the engine So that should be equal to 95 into 3.33 newtons. So maximum power should be this. Okay, so now you have to check this value against this value to check the validity. So hope this is also clear. Now question number 30. We have a simple Atwood machine. The masses of the blocks are given to us as 2 kg and 3 kg. Now the question is asking you to find the work done. Is it or the potential energy change? Work done by gravity. <coughs> So you have to find the work done by gravity in the fourth second. After the motion starts. Okay. So let's understand this. Okay, so let's first understand this. So you can understand that the acceleration will be this much. So G by 5 or 2 meters per second square, we can take the acceleration. Okay. Now, if motion starts from rest at t equal to 0, then fourth second is equal to the time from 3 to 4 seconds. <clears throat> so how we we'll calculate the displacement in 4th second that is going to be half a this okay 
So in the fourth second, what is happening is that M2 will travel down and M1 will travel up by this much, by this displacement. So work done by gravity will be equal to work done on M2 plus work done on M1. So on M2, there's positive work done by gravity. And on M1, there's negative work done. Because remember, Mg acts in the downward direction. <clears throat> this should be your answer. Now in HC Verma, they have taken G's value as 9.8. So they're getting the value of work done is slightly less than 70 joules. But if you take G as 10, this is the answer you'll get. So hope this question is clear now. Okay, next uh, we'll discuss question number 35. <clears throat> in question 35 the first thing you have to calculate so there is this children's slide ladder leading up to it so person first climbs up the ladder and then slides down Okay. So all the details are given. The total length of the slide is given. The height of the ladder is given. So indirectly this angle is known. The height is 8 meters by mistake. And indirectly we will know about the frictional coefficient because the frictional force data is given to you. So the mass of The weight of the person climbing is 200 newtons. And the average friction offered by the slide is one tenth of his weight. So friction which will be mu mg cos theta is mg by 10. Okay, so 20 newtons. Of so as he's sliding down, there's friction acting like this. Okay. 
Okay, so we have to calculate the work done by the ladder on the boil. So first thing is, what is the work done by the ladder on the boil? So we'll understand something very interesting that when the boy steps at any point on the ladder, the force applied by the ladder on the boy is equal to mg, sorry, is equal to normal reaction. Okay. And normal reaction will in general be greater than mg if the boy is accelerating upwards while climbing and n will be less than mg if the boy is accelerating downwards or whatever. But the interesting thing is that the displacement of the point of application, the point at which the force is acting for normal reaction is equal to zero because while n is acting his foot will remain in contact with the step okay so work done which is this okay, in this ds is the displacement of the point of application of force. So that is zero over here. Okay. This thing, the, the displacement of the point of application, na, that thing is zero. This is zero. So hence, work done by normal reaction will be zero. So ultimately, as he's climbing, his gravitational potential energy is increasing. Okay, three tenths is whatever, it's fine. So while climbing actually, how is his potential energy increasing? It is increasing because of the internal energy that he biologically, he expends some energy and that is converted into gravitational potential energy. So basically, you know, like to push the ladder with a force so that he generates normal reaction, he uses muscular force and to generate that muscular force, he's expending some kind of internal energy. Just think of the muscles like springs. You know? So the springs are coiled by him and then they are pushed against. So the springs are losing their internal potential energy or his internal biological energy. So while climbing, what is happening is that his delta U is positive. So this delta U is equal to the energy, the internal biological energy okay. expended by the man it is not equal to work done by some external agent because there is no external agent that is push that is pushing him with a force such that that force is doing work so hope this this concept is clear. This is a bit tricky conceptually. This first part. Okay. Now the second part, the work done by the slide as he comes down. Now as he's sliding down, it's very easy. Just think of this as his free body diagram. So as he slides down. The slide is applying what type of forces? Normal reaction and kinetic friction. So if he slides down through a displacement S, work done by normal reaction is zero. Work done by friction will be minus kinetic friction into S. So the total work done by the slide 
on the person will become equal to this work done by friction so it will be was three tenths of his weight and the length of the ladder sorry the length of the slide was 10 meters so this in joules will be the total work done by the slide on okay now next thing total work done by internal forces within the body of the person okay so work done by the internal forces equals to delta u equals to mgh while climbing and work done by his internal forces is equal to zero while sliding down so the net work done will become the sum of these two so that will become mgh so this is clear Yeah, Samar, you have asked the 30 second question. I'll explain that in brief, but it's actually a very easy question. You have to just apply the concept of change in gravitational potential energy or change in total mechanical energy is the net work done. So anyhow, make a note of this first, then we will discuss further about question 32 and after 32, which is a very simple question. We will next discuss question 38. So go through these two questions next. 32 and 38 we'll discuss.
Okay, so hope these two questions are clear. Now, uh, yeah, Shikhar, in the previous question, while sliding down, what is happening now? That your muscles are neither contracting nor expanding. You're just sitting on the slide, and it is only the gravitational force, frictional force, which are doing work on you. Okay, you're not expending any energy now. So the work done by internal forces is zero. While climbing up, what is happening? You are expending energy to contract your muscles and push against the ladder. So your internal forces are doing positive work, and you are losing energy. But while sliding down, you are neither flexing your muscles nor contracting your muscles. So there is no work done by the internal forces. So hope that is clear. Now quickly, let's go to go through thirty second question. Hope you understood the question. So here, what is happening is you have a vertical tube like this. now the tube is not frictionless it's not mentioned that is frictionless so that is why when you release a particle from here it slides down the tube but it doesn't come back to the same height because of loss of energy so it it will let's say come up to here then again slide up to here then slide back and forth and like this and finally it will settle down here so it's starting from the top position with initial velocity zero and finally settling down at the lowest position with final velocity zero so initial to final position the total work done by the frictional force which is within this is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy so that will be minus mgh so that's all the question was about very simple question okay now let's come to 38th question So, Samarth, hope thirty-second question is clear. Let's come to thirty-eighth question now. Now, thirty-eighth question is an interesting one. We have to do a bit of integration in this. So, let's understand the question first. So, you are having like a rough table top or a rough surface with a vertical edge like this. some kind of coefficient of friction now on this rough surface what you have done is you have placed a chain uniform chain of mass m and length l overhangs with two thirds part on the table okay so this chain overhangs like this over here such that two thirds of its length is on the table and therefore one third of its length is hanging like this okay so 2 by 3 l whereas this length is l by 3 so this is a chain of mass m and length l and it starts from this position okay so you have to find the work done by the friction During the period when it, अच्छा नहीं, the thirty eight question is oh thirty eight question forget about the friction. We'll do thirty eight and thirty ninth actually. So thirty ninth has friction. Thirty eight is not so much about friction. Okay, so thirty eight is now you have to find the work done by external agent to pull the chain fully onto the table okay so from this initial state you want to bring it to a state where the chain is now fully on the table we have to find the work done by an external agent to bring the chain fully back onto the table so we want to take it from this state on the left hand side to this state which i am now drawing on the right hand side where the entire length of the chain should be on top of the table
this entire length should be over here so in this state also its velocity is zero so work done by the external agent will be equal to change in gravitational potential energy because the change in kinetic energy is zero now you can see which parts gravitational potential energy is changed this parts this part center of mass was earlier here okay and now this part center of mass has come over here whereas this part center of mass let's say this is c prime this is not moving vertically c prime is remaining where it was vertically speaking okay so this part has a mass of m by 3 okay and its center of mass was at a midpoint of this so at l by 6 so this will become mass of that part that is m by 3 into g into the height through which it has climbed that is l by 6 so that is why this will become mg l by 18 okay now we will do 39th also which is based on the same concept but with friction on the surface and we have to calculate work done by friction when it slides off So just note this down first. Hope this question is clear, Shikhar. Okay, so here we are using the formula that change in gravitational potential energy is the mass of the object into g into vertical displacement of the center of mass when m is a system of particles. instead of a single particle if it's a system of particles so here we are applying this to the part of l by 3 length hanging vertically so we are applying this to that okay now let's come to 39th question Now in that you have the same situation to begin with, but now you are considering the surface to be rough, okay, and you are considering the time in which the chain is sliding off rather than being pulled up. The chain is sliding off the table, okay. So once again, initially, two L by three part is on the table because L by three is hanging vertically. and now as it slides off the table when it completely slides off this is the situation okay. okay so in this it has a speed v where is we had started from rest and we have to take coefficient of friction into account so the general equation that we'll apply going from this initial state to this final state is that work done by friction will be equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy okay so in this let's calculate the work done by friction first so what is happening is that as the chain is sliding the frictional force acting is variable so here what will happen is friction will be a variable force so we have to calculate work done by integration we cannot just calculate it with dot product so how to calculate it by integration let's understand so at some intermediate instant let's say what is happening is that this end of the chain the end point which is on top has slid through a distance x okay let's assume so at, at this point of time let us say this distance has become now l by 3 plus x 
so this has become 2l by 3 minus x like this because from here there has been a displacement of x okay. from here there has been a displacement of x so at this point of time if you see the frictional force which is acting is acting in this direction it's kinetic friction okay. and if you just make the free body diagram of this portion which is on the tabletop that portion is experiencing friction So on this portion, there is some kind of weight acting. So let's say that is M prime G. So some kind of normal reaction acting N prime. So there is kinetic friction acting, which is mu N prime. Okay. Now the this normal reaction will be equal to the weight of this part where the mass of this part will be mass per unit length of the chain into the length of this part. This, one. this is mass per unit length. Okay. Multiplied with length of the section. So that is the mass of the section on the table at some in intermediate time t. Okay. So now if this section makes a further displacement dx in this direction, the work done during this small displacement by friction will be minus of this okay. this is work done by friction for the displacement equal to dx in this direction okay. but before that once you got this normal reaction so kinetic friction is mu n prime so it is mu into mg by l into 2 by 3 l minus x this is the kinetic friction this is an instantaneous value. Of kinetic friction. At this time T equal to T. Okay, like this. So in this we have to substitute this now. The minus sign is because dx and friction are in opposite direction. So total work done by friction from initial to final, which was in my earliest diagram, so the, this will become take all the constants outside. Okay. So in the initial state, my x, the portion on the table. I mean, the displacement of that point was zero. In the final thing, that displacement of that point has become 2L by 3. Okay. We go to the earlier diagram, we can see that it started from the position where X was zero. That is the displacement of this point. And by now, the displacement of this point has become equal to 2L by 3. So, hence the limits like this, okay. so. You have to just carry out this integration. get this way. So 
दिस इज दर्टी नाइन्थ क्वेश्चन ओके वेरी गुड फोर्टी थ्री शिखर आई डिस्कस्ड इन क्लास एक्चुअली सो वी विल इंस्टेड मूव टू क्वेश्चन फोर्टी फाइव शिखर इफ यू गो थ्रू माई क्लास नोट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स बैक बिफोर वी वर डिस्कसिंग द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड इंटरनल कंजर्वेटिव फोर्स एंड द ग्रेडियंट ऑपरेटर एंड ऑल दैट नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस दैट पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन अच्छा फोर्टी टू ओके ठीक है विल डिस्कस फोर्टी टू दिन नेक्स्ट ओके सो फिनिश नोटिंग दिस डाउन एंड कम टू क्वेश्चन फोर्टी टू गो थ्रू द क्वेश्चन फोर्टी टू ऑल ऑफ यू विल डिस्कस दैट नेक्स्ट so we'll apply conservation of mechanical energy to the system consisting of the spring the block and the gravitational field of the earth in question 42 if your system has spring plus block plus the gravitational field of earth and apply conservation of mechanical energy we'll discuss what equation you will get by writing this try this out Okay, let's take a look at question forty-two. So, what is happening is that you have a block of given mass on a spring of given constant, and now the spring is compressed to a length of ten centimeters less than its natural length, and this system is released from this position. Okay, so the system is released from a position where
where this block is kept on the vertical spring. So you're placing this block on top of this vertical spring. So you're not attaching the block to the spring. You're just placing it on top of the spring and pushing it against the spring. Such that the spring has a compression of 10 centimeters given okay, and releasing the system from rest. So the initial state, what you're doing is you're pushing it with some external force so that the block is at rest okay, with the spring at a length of L minus X naught. The block has mass M, spring constant is K. So mass is 250 grams or 0 0.25 kg. The spring constant is given to us as, uh, how much is it? 100 newtons per meter. Okay, so you can also write that as one newton per centimeter. And uh, G we have to take as 10 meters per second square. Now the initial compression you are giving the spring is 10 centimeter. It's compressed to 10 centimeters less than its natural length. Or you can write it as 0 0.1 newton. So when you release it at this position, you can see that. So when you withdraw the external force, immediately at that moment, you will see now you remove the force so the block will experience spring force upwards and mg downwards okay. starting from rest so when released okay you can see that the spring force kx naught is equal to 100 into 0.1 that is 10 newtons and the weight of the block is 0.25 into 10 that's only 2.5 newtons so you can see that the block has an upward acceleration okay, so the block accelerates upwards so as a result of that now we have to find out how high does the block climb to? Okay. So we have to do this question now in two parts. We have to understand that from this state till the spring releases the block because the block is not attached to the spring. It's not attached to the spring. So until it releases, when will the spring release the block? When it comes back to natural length. When the spring has just about come back to natural length, at that instant only, this is going to get released. So at that point of time, let's say it has a speed V0, the block. Okay. So if you compare this state with this state so we can say that the change in potential energy of the spring plus change in gravitational potential energy of the block plus change in kinetic energy of the block should be zero this is a conservation of energy statement. Okay, so hope this is clear. Sigar. So between here and here, you can see the vertical displacement of the block is how much? This vertical height is equal to x naught only okay, because the spring is back to natural length. So the change in potential energy of the spring is minus half k x naught square. The change in gravitational potential energy is mgh, and the change in kinetic energy is half mv naught square. This should be zero. Okay, now in this we substitute h as x naught. So the kinetic energy of the block 
is the potential energy the spring has lost minus the gain in gravitational potential energy of this. So from this we can find out V naught. So substitute these values. So substitute in SI units. So K was one newton per uh, sorry hundred newton per meter. Mass of the block was 0.25, and x naught was 0.1. So this minus two into ten into 0.1. So this will give us our v naught. So v naught is how much now? It's square root of four minus two. So root two meters per second, or approximately. 1.41 meter per second okay now the rest is we have to understand kinematics okay because what is happening is from this now the block will be in straight vertical motion motion under gravity okay so this is the initial state on the left this is the initial state This is when the spring releases the block. So from here on, the block is in that vertical straight line motion. The spring will remain at its natural length, but the block would have gone from here upwards like this. So when the block reaches a maximum displacement, vertical displacement of h, its velocity becomes zero. So this height from here to here will be v naught square by 2g. So the total vertical displacement you will see is this. This is the total vertical displacement. So this maximum vertical displacement will be x naught plus h. So so this will be ten centimeters. So this will be ten plus ten. Twenty centimeters. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so that is a solution to this question. And that's why the correct answer for maximum vertical displacement of the block will be 20 centimeters. 10 centimeters to release from the spring and then a further 10 centimeters, which is the vertical motion under gravity. So hope this is clear, Shikhar. very good so with this we conclude today's session now the last few questions in hc verma some of them are very tricky so we will discuss uh, in detail there are some questions from vertical circular motion also which i'm sure you've done but we will discuss any doubts pending from that also not just the regular conservation of energy and work energy theorem type of questions so next lecture we will wind up the doubts from hc verma and also pick up some questions from the module so please go through the module exercise also from uh, module number two of physics, it's the second section which has worked for energy. And we will look to wind up this chapter in the next lecture. And subsequently after that, we will get into a different section of physics, which is heat and thermodynamics. Okay. So that's it for today's session. People wish you all the best.